In Carson's day, science was God, so science was good. We thought we had an unlimited energy source uh, in nuclear energy. We thought we had an unlimited medical panacea and the new generation of antibiotics. So for Carson to come out and say, um, science isn't the be-all and end-all, especially being a scientist herself, I think was counterintuitive. And in some ways, she was revolutionary that way. There is an emotional force to what she writes in Silent Spring, but it's not over the top. It's not, you know, screaming in prose. And that makes it all the more, all the more effective and all the more emotionally powerful. She was very quiet. She was very gentle. She was utterly dedicated to her, her work, which um, for the period of time that I lived with her was the writing of Silent Spring. And uh, she killed herself doing that book. In the middle of the 20th century, you could, of course, spray any chemical pesticide on the market with, with absolute abandon. There was no Endangered Species Act, no Marine Mammal Protection Act, no National Wilderness System, no Clean Water or Clean Air Act. We've come so far in the last 50 years. Her books actually um, try to humble people and say, you know, we're smart in one way, uh, but there's lots of things that a salmon can do a hooping crane can do, uh, songbirds can do, that we can't do. Rachel Carson was so immersed in the love of the natural world that she felt that she needed to share it with everyone. And that if you would understand and feel that you're part of nature, there is no way you would harm it. She would read to me when I was younger. Uh, she was full of stories. You know, she was, she was a mother as well as a uh, national figure. Smart. Detail-oriented. Persistent. Perceptive. Poetic. Courageous. The voice of Mother Nature. A humanitarian. A great writer and a great scientist. And, uh, you know, she made the two inform each other.